In this video, I'm going to address a question from a guy in a Facebook group that I ran into about having a job that he hates, that drains him spiritually, and having a lot of self-doubt in trying to do something bigger with his life. So I think a lot of people struggle with this, so I'm going to talk about that in depth in this video. So here's the question. I have this really terrible job that I absolutely hate with a passion. Good news is, it has really lit my fire into getting where I need to be so that one day I can quit. But the longer I'm there, the more spiritually I feel like I'm dying. Not suicidal or anything, don't worry, haha. -ha. I need to get the hell away from my crappy job, which is why I'm here. I'm super serious about this and I hope and I pray I can quit it soon, but can't help but feel some kind of doubt. Will I succeed? Can I truly help business owners by writing copy? Because he's learning copywriting, one of the high income skills I talk about here. Um, will I ever get to leave my job? Now, there's a few things to unpack here, but I thought that this is something that so many people feel, so uh, I will address this in a public way so that everybody can benefit from it. Now, first I'll talk about the job. Now, one thing that he mentions that I think is, is very good is that he mentions that his crappy job is what is inspiring him to do the work and take the risk, etc., do what it takes to make something better of himself. In this case, learning how to write copy and create a business writing copy. So the fact that he's noticing something that's most people would consider a bad thing in his life, but he is ascribing a, pol a positive quality to it is a wonderful thing. As I describe in this video, if you can recognize and have the faith that the, the bad things in your life are actually working to help you, then you can attract more good things in your life, you can have more positive attitude, you can attract more positive people into your life, you can attract better ideas. The list goes on. There's so much good to having a positive outlook in life. So that's a very good thing. Another good thing is that his job is supposedly providing him an income, right? So the fact that he's not desperate on the street, the fact that he still has the mental capacity and he can still pay his internet bill so he can learn copy, is as a result of his job. So there are quite a few positive things that he could recognize about his job, no matter how much his job might suck. So just because his job sucks doesn't mean he has to treat it as a negative overall. That said, if you think about in terms of what your life could be, then clearly his life could be better if he had something as an, a better alternative to this job and he can and should work towards that thing that's a better alternative to his job because if it's not making him happy, if it's draining him spiritually, then clearly it is not something that he ought to keep in his life for any large extended period of time. It is not something that is part of his ultimate purpose except as maybe a temporary stepping stone to getting there. So I believe the more that he can recognize the positive and the more that he can identify with what he's, where he's going in the future, the less his job will drain him spiritually. Right, because if your crappy job is paying for your computer and for your internet so that you can learn whatever it is that you want to be doing, then it's serving a purpose to get you to your purpose. And you shouldn't stay any longer that you need to stay, for sure. But if you recognize it as a positive, then you can stop being so bothered by it. And maybe, this is the case with a lot of seemingly negative things in our life, maybe it's a proving grounds, it's a trial to be able to respond to something adequately in order to test him for something that he's going to go through in the future. So maybe people talk down to him at work, maybe he feels belittled, maybe uh, maybe he just doesn't like having to work long hours. Whatever it is, chances are that if he tries to do something big in his life, that those little things that bother him will reoccur. And so with this job, probably he has a chance to deal with those on a limited scale. Whereas in the future, they might be much bigger and much harder to deal with. So this is like a practice ground to be able to deal with those little nagging things that bother him. And so for the job problem, I would recommend three things. One, continue to recognize your job as a positive in the overall big picture of your life. Two, learn to respond to the things that suck in your job 
in such a way that they don't suck quite so much anymore. If you can learn to be happy even under negative circumstances, well, that is a skill that will serve you immensely in every area of your life. And then number three is, of course, try to get rid of the job as fast as possible. And I don't mean just quit the job, I mean find something better to replace it. And there are two ways to do that. Either he could look for another job that's a little bit better, or he could work on doing a copywriting business or whatever he actually wants to be doing. And those don't need to be mutually exclusive, right? But I would say that if you can find another job that's not really gonna be very much better than the, the old job, and you have to spend a lot of time and effort trying to find that job, well, probably it's not worth it. But if it's easy to find a better job that maybe is better paid, maybe better hours, maybe doesn't drain you so much, then yeah, absolutely go for it. And while you're at the new job, then continue working towards your ultimate goal. Or if you can support yourself for a while without any job at all, then quit the job. Right? That's what I did. I quit my job uh, completely. I, I had some money saved up so that I could support myself for a few months, but I was able to buy the entirety of my time, and that is so valuable to have your time. If you can get 40, 50, 60 hours a week of your time back to you instead of spending it working for somebody else, well, your results are going to come so much faster because you have so much more time to dedicate to it. So if you can afford to do that, then by all means, quit your job, but you know, don't starve yourself to do it. And then the second part is about the self-doubt. He doubts that he can be successful at this. And uh, to that I say, welcome to the club, my friend. Everybody has that doubt. Why? Because as I explain in this video, we are all programmed, we are all brainwashed since birth to believe that we are nothing special and we just have to be mediocre cogs in a machine and grow up to be factory workers, right? We're programmed to only be able to follow directions, only be able to follow the beaten path, and if we do anything else, we are ridiculed and shamed for it. So that's where almost every single one of us is coming from. So if you want to do anything in your life besides what is prescribed for you, then you're going to have to deal with some self-doubt. It just comes with the territory. Now, there are ways to mitigate that self-doubt for sure, including visualization of what you want, right? If you're constantly living in that time when everything is as you want it to be, that will help with the self-doubt. If you're actually working for it, that will help with the self-doubt. I mean, it's hard to doubt yourself while, while you're actually doing something, right? The self-doubt comes in where you're just kind of sitting around thinking about it, or sitting around worrying. And then the last thing and the most important thing is to always have faith. I talk about this all the time. I'm sure you guys are all tired of it by now. But if you have faith in something greater than yourself, if you have a faith in a intelligent God that has a plan for your life, then you don't have to worry, right? It's like the story of David and Goliath, where David is an average shepherd boy, and he goes to fight the most fearsome warrior anybody has ever seen. And when people ask David, aren't you afraid? Aren't you afraid of this warrior who's 10 feet tall and has a spearhead that weighs 16 pounds? Aren't you afraid of this guy? David said, well, God said that we are his children, and he will make sure that we are victorious, so I have nothing to worry about. And then he went out and defeated Goliath. If you have that kind of faith, then the whole world opens up to you. Because you can do a lot more than most people realize, right? Because most people have brainwashed to think that they have this tiny little potential when their potential in reality is enormous. If you can have that faith, then that gives you the capacity to unlock that enormous capacity that you do have. Whereas if you don't have the faith, if you're a skeptic, like so many people are proud to be skeptics, it absolutely boggles the mind how people can be that stupid, but people, people proudly proclaim how skeptical they are because they think that that makes them superior, that makes them smarter than other people. But anyway, if you, if you get rid of that stupidity and have faith in God and in your mission, then you won't sit around worrying about what's going to happen. You're going to get to work and do what needs to be done in order to have the results that you want to have. So that's what I would say to anybody who's in that situation. Be grateful for whatever you have in your life, even if you think that it sucks. Have faith in yourself as a child of God and keep pushing. You're always going to have negative emotions. Uh, you can mitigate them somewhat. They're never going to go away completely. So 
Just keep pushing and you'll prove to yourself along the way that what you did was right. So I hope that was helpful. If so, please share this video with anybody who needs to hear it. Hit the thumbs up icon so that YouTube likes me better. Hit the subscribe button, the little bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get all my future videos. And leave me a comment if you have a question or a doubt or a concern or something that I might be able to answer in a future video. And if you want to know why I think that Black Friday is for losers, check out this video.